It's not a Japanese car. No, it's not a Japanese car. down still and one of the things that's happened is we're going to be selling the Honda inside we thought we'd better make a video of the Honda inside before it gets sold so today we're driving uh, the Honda inside it's a 2002 in blue with only 61,000 miles on the clock uh, it's we've had it for about five years and it's done quite well uh, but now it's time for it to move on so yeah the Honda insight is Honda's first uh, attempt at a, Honda, uh, a hybrid um, I believe it was one of the first hybrids in production, isn't that right? Yep. Yeah. So it's one of the first production hybrids. So this one here is what they call a parallel hybrid. So it has an electric motor next to the actual petrol engine. So it has a, a 1 litre 998cc petrol engine doing about 63 horsepower. Or there about, it might be 68 actually. I think 67. It's 67. Okay, so. You, about that, um, with the 140 odd watt uh, volt electric motor next to it, which is attached to the crankshaft, um, adding an extra 13 horsepower yep, thereabouts. Yep. So it has the the power of a 1.5, pretty much. Yeah, so it has the power of a 1.5. Um, and it kicks in like a turbo almost, doesn't it? Yeah, it does feel like a turbo every now and then. A, a small turbo almost. Yeah. But. but the actual electric motor itself is only 60 centimetres thick. Yeah, it's really small, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, uh, sorry, not 60 centimetres, 60 millimetres. Mm. So it's quite a thin uh, electric motor. What is going on here? Yeah, so it's quite a thin uh, electric motor. Adds an extra 13 horsepower onto the engine there, which does help it almost like a turbo like you say it just gives you that extra boost mm. so if I put econ on now we should be able to get the start stop going um, yeah so with only having 67 horsepower you wouldn't think that's a lot but the vehicle itself the car is made out of a really lightweight aluminium frame and it's only about 830 kilograms yep. so it's quite a light light car quite stiff suspension so it's almost like a go-kart going around. It basically used the, the team that developed the Honda NSX yeah. which was the aluminium sports car that Honda made Yeah. and they used what they learned to develop this really lightweight aerodynamic car to be their first hybrid. Mm. That was quite good it's a, a nice car but I, I think when they first came out, you know, the styling and everything was quite unusual, yes. quite space aged mm. almost. And it's only a two seater. And it's only a two seater. It was designed to be quite aerodynamic, um, hence some of the, the style choices that Honda have used. Um, so the CV, CW value is really, really low. Yeah. Uh, so you've got the covers over the wheels, things like that. They were all just a little bit odd, um, the, the consumer back then. Um, so in 2006 when the production of the Honda Insight ended, uh, in the UK there was only about 223 cars thereabouts on the road, so there wasn't very many on the road at the time and the Honda Insight was quite a rare sight and it still is today. And the second hand values of these cars have really stayed high purely because they're so fuel efficient, they're so cheap to insure. Um, I mean, just driving around, you get about 60, 70 miles to the gallon out of this thing. It's, it's really, really good. Um, it's a really good car for fuel efficiency. Practicality, with it only being a two-seater, might have been what kept it out of most consumers' hands. Plus, it was the first hybrid, so it's something that people have never seen before. But the price wasn't too crazy. It was only £17,000 in 2000, well, 2002. Yeah, I, I think Honda actually made a loss on every single one they sold. Yeah. Uh, like thousands. Um, I mean, I was, I was Honda just wanted to show off what they could do. Yeah. Um, but they lost to the uh, Toyota Prius. And that's purely because of, it's a less practical car. But how did you feel? Uh, how practical was this car to be used in, in day to day life for you? I mean, 
day to day life with this car is I think it's pretty good yeah um, yeah the boot space isn't massive because you've got the battery in the back but it's still it's still quite good you can fit quite a lot in the back of this car and the two seats doesn't really matter unless you've got more people yeah so if you've gone out with friends and that's the only thing if you've gone out with friends and uh, moving a lot of stuff maybe it's not that practical but and you've day to day got, life is fine and you've got the concealed um, cubby don't you in the back as well yeah so you've got the little extra hole and you've got a spare wheel so it does carry a spare wheel in the back yeah a full size spare wheel I, I, uh, I think it's no it's not a full size no 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 so it's, still, a, it's got still got a spare it's wheel a, it's a model specific um home corner or what do you call them uh well it's a uh, spare saving right yeah. right but yeah it's a uh, it's quite a solid car the road noise is not too bad uh I mean, equipment, the interior is pretty basic for modern day standards. Uh, if you compare it to something from 2020s, it, it's going to be crap, but it's quite basic. The seats are not really supportive, um, comparing to like a sports seat in more modern cars now. But the styling is pretty cool. The, style, the styling is very modern. Retro futuristic. Yeah. Kind of. But you only get aircon, you get electric windows, you do get power steering, it's electric power steering. Um, but other than that, that's that's all you got. I mean, originally this came with a tape deck, things like that. I mean, it was 2001. Uh, sorry, 2002. And what's quite rare for uh, a hybrid, it's it's a manual. Yeah, it is a manual. Most of them are automatics, I believe in CVTs. I think yeah, I think it was 2002. They introduced well, 2002, 2003. They introduced the CVT gearbox, which most people then ended up getting. Yeah. Which is a shame, really, because it's. it's it's quite unusual to have a hybrid car with a manual gearbox. So, how did you get this car? Well, I mean, it was it was listed as a Cat C, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so it had a lot of damage. It had a lot of damage, and I think the owner, uh, well, the person who had it, basically wanted to fix it up, but couldn't because all the parts had to come from Japan. They couldn't source them. Yeah. Uh, so he was selling it, but the actual owner had literally just bought the car. Owned it for 30 minutes. It was 30 minutes, yeah. He, yeah. he owned the car for 30 minutes, and then as he's driving off the forecourt, someone hits him. Hits the front end of the car, goes down the side, so he's done the, the front wing, the door, and the rear panels. All, all just dented in. Yeah. And the rear bumper was off as well. And the rear bumper was off. So <laughs> the guy owned it for 30 minutes, and then that was it. That was the end of his Honda yeah. inside. But it, at, at the time, it only had, what, 39, 40,000 miles? Yeah, it didn't have many miles on it. So, mechanically, it was, it was perfect, perfect condition. Yeah, in perfect condition, mechanically. But yeah, the, the original owner uh, sold it on. We got all the paperwork from him, showing that it had a new battery, everything like that. It was fantastic. Uh, we got some of the parts from uh, Japan. Yep. Uh, yeah, on the auctions. Uh, we got some of the parts from our friend Mira. He sent them over, some wheels and that. And... You did a lot of work on the body, right? Doing all the painting and stuff like that. Yep. Um, and then it passed his MOT first time, no problem. And he's passed every MOT flawlessly. Flawlessly, yeah, yeah. it's been really good. Hmm. Um, so and every time the MOT people they they always say this car looks so good for the for the time period yeah, underneath. No rust, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm not sure if they realise that it's aluminium. Yeah, there's no rust on it. Hmm. Uh, so. The time came to buy the car, and at the time I had a, an MG ZS, uh, no, an MG ZT. ZTT. ZTT2, right? And it was like, how are we going to get this car? We, we bought it, how are we going to get it? Went on eBay, found a trailer, got the trailer cheap, then realised, well, we don't have a tow bar, so we have to buy a tow bar. Bought a tow bar for my MG, we fitted the tow bar, went to pick up the trailer, paid for the trailer, got the trailer. And then went on a, I think it was a 400 mile round trip to go and pick up the car with the trailer that we just fitted. Uh, got it back back to my house. Um, and then we had to go on, you had to drive to, um, to the Netherlands, Netherlands, did you? You yep, took it to yep. the Netherlands. Where it got fixed up. So it had a, it was quite a journey to get this car, wasn't it? <laughs> but everything worked. Everything we planned worked for some reason. Yeah, it was quite good. 
So once it, once it was fixed up, off it goes. It was, um, and it's been a good car ever since. Five years. Five years we've had this, and it's uh, and it's been pretty much faultless. It's been faultless, yeah. Mm. Other than a few issues with the IMA, when you get a Honda inside, one of the problems you're going to have is the battery. Um, I mean, this is a 2002 car, so the battery is going to be an issue. It's it's coming to the end of its life. Although this had a new battery, it was 2010. That's 2012. It so was replaced. It had a new battery in 2012, so this one's going to be better. Um, but if you've got an original car with the original battery, uh, it's probably dead now. So if you go to buy one and the IMA lights on, the battery is probably done. It's probably toasted, and that'll cost you about two thousand pounds for a new battery thereabouts. There's guys that refurbish them, um, and there is options for uh, a lot of people are mod modifying them with high capacity batteries now, and really push as much as they can get out of these cars, which is quite a lot. I mean, the way they designed it was just fantastic, mm. and with a few modern touches, it, it really still holds its own in, in 2020. Well, the thing is that you can prolong the battery life with a, a grid charger. Yeah, a grid charger really helps, yeah. But we never got round to fitting one. No. And really, the IMA uh, light hasn't been an issue uh, until quite recently. Yeah. I mean, currently it's off, um, yeah. everything's working, yeah. um, but it will eventually come back on. What it, what it needs is someone to strip down the battery, rebalance the cells, and uh, off it goes again. Mm. So a couple of the issues that um, I've thought about the car, um, is you do have reduced rear visibility, purely because you've got the, the spoiler that goes across the rear windscreen, and then you've also got the uh, very thick rear pillars as well, which can block quite a lot of visibility if you're doing a reversing manoeuvre. It looks a little bit like a Honda CRX. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very similar to a CRX. Mm. But it's it's quite a compact car, so it's it's easy to navigate when you're on the parking lot. Yeah, it's about 3.9 metres long. Mm. No. It's not very big. No, it's not a big car, it's a really compact car. It fits into nice tight car park spaces, yeah. short car park spaces. And the handling is pretty sporty because it's so light. Yeah, I mean, it's firm, it's firm. It's a light car, but I wouldn't put it as hold on to the road like that. No, no, the, the ty tires are really skinny, aren't they? Yeah, it's got really skinny tires. I would own one again. Uh, this one needs a bit too much love right now. Um, and I, I think it's it's really going to be a collector's car. Yes. It's for someone who wants who wants one and wants to collect them. I do think it has a, a lot of automotive significance. So, mm. so yeah, one of the very first hybrid hybrids to be yeah. out there, um, and it's it's spe more special than a, a Prius, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. One of the things as well that you have in this car is you do have a, a standard start motor, but it never uses it. It's just a backup. Normally, it starts on the IMA motor, so the integrated motor that assists the engine um, to add that extra 13 horsepower. It's also the start motor as well. So when you do turn the key, it's almost silent when it starts. It just the engine just starts. It's quite nice. It starts on the IMA battery. It's, it's it's very smooth, very smooth start. But it also has the stop and start technology as well, which when this was a new car was a very new thing. And when you pull up to the traffic lights, as long as you've got the aircon set to econ, um, the engine will just stop. Aircon turns off, things start to warm up a bit. Um, as soon as you put it into gear, engine just starts again and off you go. I mean, it's not, it's not magical technology anymore. Um, a lot of cars have it now, but back then it was very rare, very magical, very special. Uh, I think they really nailed it as well, because um, like you said, it does it with the uh, IMA motor, mm. and it's so smooth, it works so well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, even if you would put this in a modern car, it, it would, yeah. yeah, a lot of cars have a start-stop system where it does it use just the start, start motor. motor, doesn't it, yeah. Yeah, I think for Honda's first attempt, I mean, they've, they've made electric cars before this, they've, you know, they've had experience doing it. It's not like when this was made that electric cars were new or anything like that. But for a first attempt at a hybrid and trying to get something 
mass produced now uh, with star stop technology with the hybrid batteries and the hybrid motor I think they did a really good first attempt at it yeah it was they really hit the nail on the head on the first go and then you have the, the Mark II but that's that's a different that's a different story mm. it's not special I don't think no it's that's just a normal car no no exotic materials like the uh, aluminium and yeah and fully the, aluminium um, body you've got the uh, magnesium oil pan on this car as well mm. which is quite a, an expensive part so a lot of people replace the plug with a, a tap yeah so when yeah. you do an oil change uh, there's no risk of uh, damaging the magnesium the oil thread pan. yeah you don't want to damage that and have to, to buy a new oil pan well the engines made out of aluminium and magnesium and plastic as well there's a lot of plastic yeah but the exhaust manifold is plastic yeah that, that was pretty special technology as well yeah, and it still works. Yeah, it still works. So it's a, a very lean burning engine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a, it's got a very lean fuel ratio. Um, everything about fuel efficiency. Yeah, it was. They really, when they built the, when they designed the engine, everything is about fuel efficiency. The the spark plugs. It has free. It's a free cylinder engine, so it's got free spark plugs. It's got three different spark plugs, not three of the same spark plugs. It's three very specific spark plugs for each cylinder. And when you put it in, the spark plugs have to be at a certain uh, degree of turn for it to burn perfectly in that cylinder. Yeah. They, so I wouldn't want to be the person designing that, you know. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be the mechanic having to refit the spark plug. I think it's different with every single car. So they, every spark plug is, is marked, but they, well, I wouldn't say hand built these engines, but. Um, I think they took the specifications of, of every every single engine and, yeah. and matched the spark plugs to go with it. Um, yeah, it's quite special. Hey, what's your favourite thing about the Honda inside? Um, well, we live really close to this Ferrari Ferrari dealership, and um, it somehow pleases me that all those Ferraris on the on the forecourt there, this is a rare car, mm. and it does turn heads. People that are not into cars, they they, they don't look twice. Yeah. But people who do like cars, they always have questions about it when you park up somewhere, mm. and uh, some of them have never seen it before. Uh, some some people do know what it is, and uh, they think it's so cool. 